Hey folks, it's Ascendage again, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be another random event. I'm going to preface this video by saying really quick that this is not meant to be a guide of any sorts, and chances are, whatever I do in this video will not be recommended to do for Zalcano. This will just be a learning experience for myself, and hopefully it's entertaining, or at the very least, you can learn something to not do for yourself. So now that I have access to Priftiness Agility course, it's actually pretty chill, and I'm actually really enjoying it. So I'm going to get back on the agility grind and start pumping out some levels. There we go. There's the first level of the agility grind. And now I don't have to bring the summer pies to Zolandra. Well, the grind continues and there's level 77 agility. When I arise from this dark hole, I will have 78 agility. And again, I'm completing the course and there's 79 agility. As of now, the only things I know about Zalcano are that it was released with Priftinus and Song of the Elf's Quest in July of 2019. Zalcano is located underneath Priftinus, and Zalcano is considered a scaling boss similar to Winter Todd that focuses on mining. For this video, I'll be using the wikis, which is where I got this equipment and inventory setup. As far as I can tell, you pretty much just have to make and view Tefra, throw it at Zalcano, and then when Zalcano's shields are down, I have to mine Zalcano to take it down. It really doesn't seem too difficult, and I'll be going in with my friend, who is also new to this, and hopefully we can figure this out pretty quickly. I'm not entirely certain on this inventory setup, as it seems like I'm bringing way too many brews, but I'll figure that out as I go along, and if I need to adjust it for later, then so be it. But that's everything I need to say, so let's get to it. Okay, looks like we're about ready, so when this game ends, we'll go ahead and hop in for the next game. Okay, let's go. Let's give this a shot. Okay, this seems pretty simple so far. So I should wait for the blue blue portals. Okay. That makes sense. I'm learning. Oop, nope, 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 nope. Oop, someone died. That's cool. Mine, mine, mine. Nice. First kill. Ooh, okay. I guess I probably will need some more brews. <laughs> Mine like you paid for it. How adorable. That was a sloppier second round. But I will take it. So it seems like one thing I need to do is just uh, keep quick and keep on my toes. And this really isn't that great for mining experience it seems like. But at the very least it is more entertaining than just sitting there mining at the motherload mine. So I thought I was bringing too many brews, but actually, uh, I brought a lot more stamina pots than I needed. <laughs> I'm actually kind of impressed with myself. I'm five games in and I haven't died yet, so. So after 10 kills, I got just over 225k gold and 19 crystal shards. Not bad. Are you joking? I wasn't even on the... Ugh. Man. Ah. <laughs> uh. Wait, I can just go back and grab my stuff, can't I? Oh, everything is free to reclaim. That's cool. Ah, why? Why would you... <laughs> Are you joking? I, I just want to grab my stuff, man. Alright, so my friend and I decided to hop because the game is moving too fast on the official world. So we're going to go ahead and try it on different world. Hopefully with less people, the game will move a little slower and we can more easily get some kills. That was my best drop of the day. Pretty good. Huh. Turns out that was, <laughs> turns out that was my tenth kill, so yeah. <laughs> I do seem to be getting more money experience now that the games are a bit slower. I have no clue what this dude is talking about with full, 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 no full. This dude does not like other people. <laughs> Alright, that is twenty kills so far with Zalcano. I'm going to take a break, but but let's check the spoils from the last 11 kills. 633k from 11 kills, plus 225 off of the other 9. And that leaves me with about 860k worth after 20 kills. That's a good bit of money. Okay, so now we're getting back to some more Zalcano. In my first two games back, I actually got back-to-back -back MVPs. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so my friend just gave me back the dragon... P Ooh, Crystal Limpling. Awesome. Awesome. 40 rune dart tips. 
Okay, so I've already started preparing myself for some clue scrolls, but here's the loot that I got from 10 more Zalcano kills. So in total I got 1.25 mil, almost 1.26 mil. I did get quite a few MVPs though, because the guys my friend and I were playing with kind of sucked for the most part. So I was able to eke out quite a few MVPs and get a lot of loot. But yeah, that's not too shabby. So to get started with this video, I figured I would tease you guys a little bit and give you guys 80 agility. I can now do the relic of course, that's cool. I can now do the relic of course, that's cool. Well, I ran into a crystal impling while doing the agility course here in Priftinus, and wow, I got 8 radar seeds for a total of 308k. What in the world? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. One lap later, I found another Crystal Impling, and I got seven more Radar Seeds. Oh! <laughs> so nice. Alright, so I had a bunch of Crystal Shards in my bank, so I figured I'd go ahead and give the Elven Crystal Chest a shot, because apparently you can earn about a profit of 45k per key if you buy the keys off the Grand Exchange. So, yeah, this is looking pretty good so far. Wow. After the first 10 keys, I got myself 686k worth of loot, which means by my rough math and math, I earned about 480k-ish. I like that. Here's incoming another 10 keys. Off of another 10 keys, there's about 245k worth of profit. And here are the final 8 keys of the first 28 that I had. And off of those final 8 keys, about another 220k ish of profit. Alright, so officially I spent 582k on the 28 crystal keys that I bought. And according to Runelight, the Elven Crystal Chests gave me 1.5 mil. So that's a pretty good profit. I like that a lot. So I got a bunch of extra crystals and keys from the chests while opening them. But it's more of the same stuff, so I figure I'll save you guys the boring details and not show any more chests. From the Elven Crystal Chest, I ended up getting three Crystal Acorns, so I figured I'd go ahead and plant them, get some Crystal Shards back from them, and continue the cycle of opening the Crystal Chest. So yeah, let's go ahead and make these uh, Acorns into saplings. Go ahead and water them, and I'll check back in in about five minutes when these Acorns turn into saplings. Alright, so five minutes have passed. I went ahead and raked the Crystal Tree Patch, so let's go ahead and treat it with compost. I'm using Ultra Compost for this tree to get the highest yield and planting the crystal tree. I don't see anything on the wiki for if these things do get diseased and if they do, who to pay to make sure they don't get diseased, but I'll just have to see what happens with this. The tree takes about 8 hours to grow, so I will check on it then. Well, as you can see behind me, the crystal tree has grown, so let's go ahead and check health to get the experience and then chop it down to actually get the crystals. Boom, and now let's go ahead and plant the second one. Cool. Nice little uh, gift for doing the elven crystal chest. Okay, let's head down and check out what's in the Treharn mine. I'm not going to mine anything, but it looks like there's a lot of ores over here. I can see mithril, iron, coal, gold, adamantite right off the bat. And according to the wiki, there are some rune rocks in here. But wherever they may be, this seems like a pretty cool mine, if I ever need to mine normally. That's all to see here, folks. Oh, look at that. That's kind of neat. There's just a couple of people uh, fighting here in this little dueling ring. Nice little aesthetic to add to the area. So, I know there are more areas to check out here, but the last area I'm going to explore is the Ironworth Slayer Dungeon. Now, it doesn't seem like there are any multi-combat areas in here, so... So you should definitely see if the areas are open and at the catacombs occur end, so you can speed up your Slayer tasks. But yeah, this should be a nice alternative if you need to go somewhere else, or if you just want to stack up on those crystal shards. Ooh, look at that, I'm being attacked. Let's get out of here. This seems like a nice little Slayer cave, and... And if I ever need to, I can come here. 
I know there are a lot more things I could look into, but that's actually going to wrap it up for this video. I'm kind of liking these shortish videos focused on a certain area or a piece of content that I'm currently wrapped up in. And I know some of the clips I put in this video are used in other videos, but it all did kind of fit together to show you guys what exactly Preptinus has to offer. It's a pretty neat area, and I think you guys will like it. If you liked or disliked the video, you know what to do. Feel free to leave me feedback or suggestions in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up with my latest videos. Please check out the Discord server. I'm trying to build a nice little community that we can all hang out and enjoy the game with. And I will catch you guys in the next one.